so I'm Valentina Williams. I'm a third year medical student at BCOM Auburn. And my project was on the slow beta myosin in cardiac muscle being regulated by antisense long non-coding RNA during cardiac hypertrophy. And so we know that cardiac muscle is subject to pathophysiological regulation. And in clinical heart disease, the predominant stimulus for pathological hypertrophy is pressure overload, whether it be due to hypertension or valvular heart disease, et cetera. Cardiac muscle contraction is also catalyzed by two motor protein isoforms, alpha and beta myosin heavy chain. And so we know that in hypertension and progression ultimately to heart failure results from an increase in this beta myosin heavy chain, which is encoded by the MYH7 gene. So our lab previously discovered that there are actually several long non-coding RNAs transcribed in the antisense strand of this gene. And this antisense strand has a distinct transcription start site that is downstream of MHRT, a gene that has been shown to protect against hypertrophy and ultimately cardiac heart failure. And then an exon of this antisense variant partially overlaps and is complementary to mirror 208 b So this may be confusing, but if you look at this diagram, you can see the MYH7 gene, um, the MHRT that I said, and then you can also see in our antisense where the overlap is with mirror 208 b this is significant because MIR-208B has been shown to activate transcription of MYH7, thus inducing this beta myosin upregulation and hypertrophy. So first we looked at this antisense strand and did a shape map to see if this MIR-208B connection was actually, um, had the minimum free energy to actually bind and cause regulation. And so through our shape map and our minimum free energy diagram, we did find that there actually was optimal free energy to bind here and use it as a regulation site. So our hypothesis with this research project was that the antisense strand levels are decreased in aortic binding and thus hypertrophy in association with this beta myosin upregulation. And this would implicate that the antisense strand is actually a regulator of cardiac MYH7. So our method for testing this, we induce cardiac hypertrophy through a pressure overload surgery, the aortic banding that I've mentioned, and then we did that for 16 days and we compared it to a sham surgery group. We then looked at the RNA expression in these tissues through real-time PCR. So first we wanted to show that there was a relationship between MYH7 and its antisense strand. So we looked at it in healthy muscles in soleus, cardiac left ventricle, as well as the right ventricle. And here you can see that in these normal muscles, there is an inverse relationship. So when MYH7 is increased, we see a decrease in the antisense strand. We also wanted to show that there was significant hypertrophy that happened during this aortic banding time. And so here through our M-mode echo, you can see that the cardiac mass was increased by 29%. The left ventricle intraventricular septal thickness was increased by around 24%. And the left ventricle free wall thickness was around 32%. So they were all similarly increased. Here are these numbers again. You can also see that the internal diameter of the left ventricle was decreased by about 9% in the banding mice. So we showed that there was a significant amount of hypertrophy that did happen. We then wanted to look at um, different parameters to make sure that this was clinically relevant hypertrophy and not just muscle overgrowth. And so we looked at A and P and B and B and P levels, and these were both increased in aortic banding, showing that we had clinically significant hypertrophy and potentially acute cardiac heart failure in these rats. So then we wanted to look specifically at MYH7 and its antisense strand. And here we saw that there was around a twofold increase, sorry, around a twofold increase in MYH7 in these hypertrophy uh, models, as well as the antisense strand decreased by around fourfold, which we've stated here. So our conclusion was that the antisense strands were decreased through this binding and in association with the beta myosin upregulation. And so our central hypothesis is that this antisense strand interacts with regulatory RNAs like the MIR-208B and proteins mediating MYH7 repression and expression. So why is this important? So this actually has huge translational implications for clinic. So if we could use this antisense strand and deliver it exogenously as a therapeutic, we could potentially inhibit this upregulation of beta-myosin, and thus we could preserve cardiac function and protect the heart from cardiac heart failure. A lot of our current um, treatments and therapies for patients who are undergoing 
Um, hyper hypertrophy as well as cardiac failure are more focused around the pressure overload part of the system and not necessarily the muscle. And so if we could potentially revert some of this muscle back by inducing the antisense and actually isoform switching back to alpha myosin, we could potentially restore some heart function that these patients don't have any longer and do a better job of preventing it from getting to a point that causes cardiac failure.